We're back. Jesus 911. Second segment, we'll be talking to some, you're going to be listening to some, some clips of some liberals <laughs> that uh, just went off the rail. It, yeah, we, we Mr. Engine, yeah, the, put on, go ahead and, uh, the first clip is a malformed modernist priest. This is precisely the problem we have in the church right now, because there's many people like this priest, and uh, he speaks for many malformed clergy. It's only 56 seconds. Mr. Engineer, can you play the clip? Usually wouldn't be very happy about it. And usually the community would be disinterested in it. It wouldn't feel they were supporting them or whatever. So it's very much the wind on, on the face of anybody now who's making a decision to become a priest is really running counter to the culture of the day. In terms of the young priests, I mean, part of the difficulty we have is that we have very few vocations to the priesthood. But part of the other difficulty we have is that the vocations we're getting are like the people, are like my parish priest in the 40s and the 50s at home. They're traditional they want to wear black. They want to wear soutans. <laughs> they want to talk to people about sin. Yeah. <laughs> they want the Latin mass. And they want to dress up investments. And they want to do all of this sort of thing. Like people did 40, 60 years ago, 70 years ago. So I, I, I despair of the young priests. I'd prefer if we hadn't got them. Wow. <laughs> His name is Father Brendan Hoban. He's, he's an influential priest in the in, in the Irish Synod. He's from Ireland. He's an Irish priest. Ruben, this is not atypical. This is almost, I would have to say, the norm uh, that you see today post-Vatican II, uh, especially when the, in the older generation. People like 70 and older, this is the way they feel about tradition, and this is the way they feel about uh, the Latin Mass mm -hmm. and uh, about anything before the Council. They can't even fathom that young people want <laughs> to have the Mass. And like I said, it because it challenges them, it makes them uncomfortable. Then it, it help, you know, they want people want to grow. They and uh, they just don't want this feel good uh, thing. I mean, you we, we heard it. I know you probably have already heard that that actor uh, Shea Labouf, uh, yes, converted to Catholicism, and he and the interview with uh, Bishop Baron. Bishop Baron. He, he said that it was the Latin mass that brought him to, and Bishop Baron was trying to steer the conversation <laughs> away from that. You know, well, why? Well, you know, get. <laughs> and he says the guitar masses feels like you're you're they're trying, you're to, trying sell to sell me something. something. Yeah, that was hilarious, Ruben. I'm saying Bishop Barron just looking at him like, yeah. but he couldn't believe what he's saying. The only credit I give Bishop Barron is that he played the full clip, this interview. You know, he let it go. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, we want to play another clip of a now of a malformed lay Catholic. <sighs> Who's uh, this guy's? I guess he worked for Catholic Charities. He's uh, one of CEO, CEO Jesse, <laughs> top of the food chain for Catholic Charities. Yeah, Ruben's got a mouthful to share with you about Catholic Charities. But Mr. Engineer, can you play the clip? Our primary job at Catholic Charities is to be His an authentic Bob. Catholic voice on Bob human from Catholic Charities while we serve the poor and vulnerable. Being an authentic voice sometimes means saying things that might be hard to say and hard to hear. When it comes to the topic of racism, I need to speak from the heart as a human being, speak as a Catholic, and speak as the CEO of Catholic Charities. Watching what has unfolded and listening to the voices of the marginalized since the death of George Floyd has changed me in a way that is likely long overdue. Oh, bro. <laughs> it has made me realize some important things about my own life <clears throat> that maybe I always knew, but never truly embraced with enough blunt truth. I am a racist. God. <laughs> Unbelievable. This guy's name is Bob from, he's the CEO of Catholic Charities. He's a liberal Catholic. Yep. And as you can see, Ruben, when you hear these guys talk, it's very sad because these, these liberal woke Catholics, their pursuit of salvation has been replaced by social justice. Yep. He <clears throat> lost me at the death of George Floyd. That's <laughs> I, I'm not Jesse. This guy is all at the CRT, you know, critical race theory. Uh, you know, he doesn't realize what his faith teaches that J Jesus commands us to love everybody, you know, re regardless of, of their, you know, their color, of their skin. Exactly. And, um, yeah. In fa yeah. In fact, uh, I mean, that's right. Embedded in the new Testament. So, you know, there is no, uh, there is no uh, male nor female, slave nor free man, uh, Gentile or Jew. We are all one in Christ Jesus. It was really Christianity, Catholic Christianity, let's just be honest, that's, uh, that's, that's given the world 
uh, a- any unifying force. When you go to mass in many places around the world, especially as a tourist, you'll see people from every single stripe and nation on planet Earth all praying to the same one tune triune God. It's really, Ruben, only Catholicism that is the answer to to the division caused by Adam and Eve. Right. That's right. And and it, this guy needs to be fired. He, he He's saying that, <laughs> imagine that every, uh, it's impossible for white people to not be racist, you know? That's, uh, that's yeah. actually generalizing. That's way, yeah. he's gone way overboard. And, right. That, that, that's called the error of overgeneralization. That's in philosophy. That's, he would get... In a speech and debate class, they would they would gig him on that. Mm-hmm. That's called overgeneralization. That's a thinking error when in speech and debate, when people just br- uh, paint everybody, an entire class of people, with the same broad brush. Mm, that's right. Hey, so Jesse, I sent you an article on. Uh, it, it's written uh, about twenty years ago, but it's it's still holds it's, it's relevant, today. right? Yeah, and, and with this, it's it's just saying that Catholic charities law has lost its soul. Um, <laughs> You know, it used to be a, a, a good organization, but uh, it, it's no longer Catholic, for one thing. And um, it, so it used to be a, a model to emulate and getting the poor into the mainstream by emphasizing moral values and ethical conduct. But but no, rather than trying to promote a traditional values and God-fearing behavior, Catholic charities, uh, they become, over the last three decades, an arm of the welfare state with 65% of its $2.3 billion annual budget now flowing from government sources. That little is explicitly religious or even values laden about most of the services it's 1400 member agencies and 46,000 paid employees provide. So that just tells you right there, they're, they're, they have a, getting handouts from government sources. So naturally they have to, uh, they have to acquiesce to the government's yeah. belief system or the, the money's going to stop flowing. <laughs> it's, um, it's, it's, uh, in, you know, just unconscionable what what these people are doing. Um, it's one of the nation's most powerful adv- advocates for outworn welfare state ideas, especially the idea that social and economic forces over which the individual has no control rather than his own attitudes and behavior are the reason for poverty. So it, they want people to have this victim mentality. Oh, it was me because everything around me, like that guy was saying, where they're all, they're all racist, you know, so there's no way I can <laughs> prosper in this, this, uh, in this world. And uh, all I could say is, you know, Bob, speak for yourself, speak as an individual. You don't speak for the rest of the church. Can you imagine how many Reuben good, holy, Catholic, Caucasian brothers and sisters were insulted when they heard him? It it would be like if somebody from the cartel said, all of us Mexicans are womanizers. I would all of us Mexicans. We 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 you know, we worship less. I would be insulted mm-hmm. with this guy, Bob did Ruben. He insulted half of uh, Caucasian Catholics in this country who are normal, who are orthodox, who are traditional, who are patriotic and don't have a, 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 a racist bone, a racist bone in their body. I mean, this guy, this guy was just basically talking about what's in his own heart. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. He was just giving us a, a confession right there. Yeah. Okay, Bob. Cool. Go to go to a priest and, and 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 confess that to a priest. I don't want to hear it. 